Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Illusion Fox Gaming. So today we are going to be going through and unlocking the last Alliance Raid, which is part of the Mist of the Realm series. Derek casts Languid Gaze to the throw. The Secret of the Twelve. Doesn't take too long to extract the information. Crow should be here any moment now. Apologies to wait. With what that, I've obtained information from all of my stones. Thank you for worrying about me. While it's good to know that I can handle myself, I'm heartened, heartened to be doing this with you all. I do things as well, Brygot Nafka, for accepting my request with such good grace. Think not of it. You did well to see your task through, little one. Indeed, come, come, let us all return to the to the Omphalos. I read something pretty interesting, which I gotta see is whether it actually is. When we actually get into the raid. I didn't mean to actually look at it, but it was just like so interesting. It's like, wait, what? Wish it would just teleport me over there. Quickly, we get this done. We might move over to uh, Honkai Star Rail because that had a patch here recently as well. You took your time. Did something happen? Ah, so you rendezvoused with Kryle. How was your experience with gods, if I may ask? Not only did you help a dissolution man find his way, you looked in on Kryle besides. Thank you, and you as well, Derek. I fear I overset my bounds, but what is, what's done is done. We shall return to our sanctums. You, you have our gratitude for the delightful time. By holding your instruments out to the monument, you will be able to augment the missing information. Be well, dear children. Shall we then? Amazing. What was impossible to cipher is now crystal clear. Without further ado, I shall read out the epigraph. As beings who endure by the will of the star, we are susceptible to the influence of hopes and prayers. Thus do we commit our yokes herein, lest we stray from our purpose. He who is named Brygot shall reside over construction. His duty to fortify the works of men and encourage them to build.
He who is named Rogar shall preside over destruction, his duty to galvanize the star's beating heart and facilitate mankind's regeneration. Uh, hey, Kuroi, thanks for the raid. I'm going to guess your internet is hating you tonight. Since you're raiding me already. She who is named Azima shall preside over the sun, her duty to nurture its life-giving light, and illuminate the truth for all to see. He who is named Nodthal shall preside over the subterrain, his duty to make gleam the riches hidden in the darkest depths and in men themselves. She who is named Nafka shall preside over fertility, her duty to fill the land with life and prepare a path of peace and plenty. He who is named Althik shall preside over space and time, his duty to endow the star with material vigor that mankind's march may never cease. But let's give Kuroi a little shout out here. No, that's not where I wanted to type. I want to type over here. She who is named Nenfina shall preside over the moon, her duty to perpetuate the turning of night and day, and foster love in the hearts of all. He who is named Thaliac shall preside over the rivers, his duty to quench the thirst of men and water their minds with wisdom. She who is named Nemea shall preside over the stars, her duty to preserve the celestial fabric of the seasons and weave the threads of men's lives. She who is named Glimlin shall preside over the seas, her duty to ad administer sides inspire men to come together as one and seek new horizons. He who is named Oshon shall preside over the mountains, his duty to sustain the breath of the firmament and in wandering share in men's solitude. He who is unnamed shall watch unflinching, his duty to stand guard over his charge always and unto the end. <clears throat> there, the epigraph concludes. We've been given quite a lot to ponder. Hopes and prayers influencing their nature. I really need to get back into drawing cards for things. I've not done it in so long, ever since I, my PC died. So once I'm done with this cutscene, uh, I think I have that set back up and we will get draw some cards here for the, those two events. Thank you, Odie, for the 34-month sub. Have you any thoughts on the contents of the epigraph? Say that the prayers have changed the twelve into their present forms. That is rather hard to believe. Given we know of Dynamis, I believe it is entirely possible in the presence of that energy, hopes and prayers have more tangible results than one might expect. Hmm. 
Its power may be curbed upon our star, but over thousands of years of worship, it could have influenced the gods in various ways. <coughs> Ways such as what uh, Kyrian just described for one. Others that come to mind are Halone's shield and spear, which reflect her status as a goddess of war, and Amiya's spinning wheel, which is an app apparatus for a goddess of fate. Thus did they create this monument, this yoke, that they might never lose sight of their duty, no matter how much they may change. I'm inclined, I'm inclined to agree with Raha. The gods wrote that they endure by the will of the star. Who that refers to, we all know, know too well. No, it did. It went through. I even gave you a shout out and everything. Uh, once I was done with this cutscene, I was going to switch over to... Uh, webcam so I could draw cards for yours and Odie your raid and Odie's uh, sub I, I figure you're having it you're having internet troubles still so which is why you raided me who that refers to we all know we all know too well Heidelin By sundering reality, she must have known that she would, sh would shake the very foundation of existence. Anticipating the potential chaos, I suspect she charged her collaborators, collaborators with maintaining stability. If this is true, then might not the 13th unnamed being be the Watcher on the Moon? certainly fall into place. I wonder if he would be willing to share what he knows. As it stands, we've yet to encounter three gods. As there's no telling what may happen once we've fought them all, I believe we should try to uncover as much of the truth as we can. The better to know how to proceed. Good thought. To that end, ere we seek out the Watcher, Rahal and I shall return to Charlie and compile our findings. The data from the Analyzer are not least of all. But hopefully you have enough internet to at least go ahead with your raid. Like, your actual raiding, not the raid you sent to my channel. To think that the investigation might lead us to the moon, I eagerly look forward to the next stage of our field work. Is not yet more grueling encounters with the gods await. You should rest up and gather your strength. Not long now ere we arrive at the truth. For the longest time I've journeyed alone, not involving myself in the affairs of others. But I've enjoyed our time together. You've undertaken the investigation with all earnestness, and it has been a pleasure to be part of it. 
When I imagine the moment we must part ways, I can't help but be sad, and it surprised me that I feel that way. Forgive me, I didn't mean to wax sentimental. If you'll excuse me, I shall head outside for some fresh air. There he goes, again. Do you suppose you could follow after him? Can't quite say why, but I feel as though he'll suddenly vanish one day, never to return. Yeah, because I feel like he's one of those gods. Hey, Happy Goose. Is it really your first time talking to this channel? I I'm very surprised by that. I could have sworn you'd been by here before. I guess not. Uh, thank you for the follow. Okay. So I've got three cards that we now need to draw to put in the scrapbook. So let me switch over to live cam and... I can take those off because those were for something else. So let's see. For uh, Croy's Raid in our scrapbook... We'll be putting in a Long Winter, which is from the Lord of the Rings uh, trading card game that came out, like, 20 years ago. For Odie's 34-month uh, resub. We've got a Kurt Irvine. I will regain my name no matter what, which is a Force of Will card from their uh, Valkyria Chronicles set. And for Apicus's uh, follow, I can get it to focus. We've got a large explosion. There's no flavor text on that. But that is from the same set as, from Force of Will, as the previous one. Damn it, I'm throwing things all over my desk. Why am I doing that? I don't know. I'm losing my mind. Oh, just you, Kyrian. What is it? Snowgrim's worried that I'll, su I'll suddenly vanish, you say? Well, as the saying goes, all things must come to an end, whether we will it or no. When our work is finished, we, we must go our separate ways. Doing so will sadden me, as you well know.
Yet that sadness is part of the joy I've derived from our companionship. So I will accept it when the time comes and strive with you to the last. As you know, my friend, I'd rather you live your own life, but having you helped you, I won't send you away against your will. You are a busy woman, so I won't keep you. For a rest shirt, I will share with you any tidings I receive from Crowd. Take care, my friend, and see you again in due course. Derek's waiting word from Kryle. Oh, it's just good of you to come, but I'm afraid there's still no word from Kryle and Rahatia. They're working as fast as they can to compile the findings of our investigation, I shouldn't doubt. But between the Phantom Room's etheric data and the monument's epigraph, they have much more to review. Now, while waiting developments... I had a mind to pay Snogram a visit in the Omphalos. If you aren't otherwise occupied, you should come too. Wait, why the hell am I teleporting? I just have to go down this way. Oh, it isn't Kyrian and Derek. But no gra Cryo or Raha, I see. Unfortunately, speaking of whom, would you prefer to be not if you, would you not prefer to be with them in Charlian? You're a research too, after all. I find myself much more effective in the field. Being here gives me inspiration, you see. And of late, I've been mulling over the opening words of the epigraph. As beings who endure by the will of the star, we are susceptible to the influence of hopes and prayers. Thus do we commit our yokes herein, lest we stray from our purpose. The suggestion that faith has shaped the nature of the Twelve paints a truly intriguing picture. <clears throat> the 
But truth be told, I was hoping that I might speak with the gods again. But they haven't graced us since, since time we solved the mystery of the monument. They only do so on exceptional occasions, it seems. As it may, I believe there might be another way to see them. When we journeyed with the gods, Azema told me that each of them wished to speak with you in private. You, Kyrian. Call them before them before their heavens. I have a feeling they will answer. So won't you give it a try? And afterwards, afterwards, let us know what they said. I, for one, see no harm in it. But if you are disinclined, then do not feel pressured. It's entirely your decision. Please am I that you should seek me out. I had wished to speak with you. It doesn't mind me well to see that you have been dedicating yourself to crafting. In my capacity as the builder, I watch your progress upon this path with keenest interest. The act of crafting embodies the spirit of improvement and advancement. It is my hope that you will strive ever forward and seize that which you most desire with your own hands. If it isn't the Dauntless Kyrian, full glad am I that that you would thus call to me. When you, you and yours investigated the origins of the Fist of Rogar, you posited some interesting theories. The connection between myself and the self divinity in particular, you did well to draw that conclusion. Your inquiring minds have taken you far, child of man, and they will ta take you further still.
Ah, at last you've come. I was right to entrust your zealous scholar companion with the message. Ever since our first meeting, I knew that I simply must see you again. There's something familiar about you. You awaken forgotten feelings in me. Feelings that once smoldered like embers amidst the ash. Perhaps you are resemble someone I knew long ago. Yet, whatever the reason, your presence gives me comfort and warmth. May your light ever burn bright. One moment. Sorry about that. Karen, we bid you welcome. No, then. Though we appear to be two beings, the dual aspect of divinity was not always so. Man's hopes harbor power, and was his faith offered over millennia that shaped us into our present form. In answer to your faith, we, the traitors, shall watch over mankind as he strives for that which he desires. I wasn't curious. You wish to speak, do you? Tell me, have you ever met an elemental? Many hold that they were born of me, and as I mentioned, they are the voice of those who abide in the Twelves Wood. At times they may seem excessive in their actions, but it is out of an abundance of love, so pray be good to them and heed their warnings.
Is it? I must say, there's something to be said for being summoned by a mortal. The life of man is but a drop in the great river of time. Thus are you and yours want to rush ahead, not wasting a single moment. Be that as it may, I certain sights will only come into view if one stops to look. So be not afraid to pass the time in ways which at first may not seem fruitful. Should you dare to do so, you may well, well be visited by an eye-opening experience. Such is the richness of time. This lesson I learned in another life from an unexpected visitor. Oh, now, if it isn't my dear Kyrian, how good of you all of you to call to me? I'm sorry if I gave you a shock by joining my brother in battle, but I couldn't help myself. I've always done everything together, he and I. Ah, such a joy it was to face you and yours. You displayed the self-same determination that allowed you to defy fate. And it was one surprise after another. Hmm, I can't help but feel as though I spoke similar words not long ago. Who was it too, I wonder? Was that me I just spoke to? I can't remember. No, nothing posted about not running in the grass. How bold you are to summon me. There's no less than I expect from one of mine. In recognition of your violent deeds, I offer word, a word of counsel. Well do I know the power of men's hopes, of mortal faith, and there is no faith that I reject. Yet in every age there are those who invoke the name of the divine for their own ends. Be not misled by them. Oh, what a delightful surprise. You wish to see me, did you? I'm truly grateful that we can talk like this. As you know, I'm the goddess of love, yet that obviously doesn't mean I have a monopoly on love. For instance, my brethren love mankind with all their hearts, just like me. And whether or not Oshan is my beloved as mortals believe, I have more than enough room in my heart for everyone. Be it men or gods, I love you all alike. Needless to say, I love my adorable Dalamud too, whom you and yours gifted to me. Did the gods appear? Talk to Derek up here. Sorry. Spoken to your satisfaction, have you? Then let us await Cryo and Rahatia together.
still no sign of them. Ah, oh, there's something I've been meaning to ask you. As an adventurer, you are better traveled than most. Of the places you have seen, what kind do you like the best? Ah, oh, yes, I can see the, the appeal in that. Though I travel alone, I quite enjoy listening to the sounds of life in the cities and towns I visit. I myself am partial to wandering Yorzia, so rich in ether, this land, and possesses so many aspects. Because when I was traveling through the Twelves Wood that I encountered this fellow, I knew not how he came to be injured alone, but I couldn't turn a blind eye. He has long since recovered, and I probably should have returned him to his forest home. When I see him here, undone in the presence of gods, I can't help but feel twas fate that delivered him to me. Still, the day will come when we must go our separate ways. They're finally here, everyone. Welcome back. How far did your work? It longer than we expect, anticipated. But we managed to compile our findings and hence deliver a course of action. Indeed, hereon we would do well to tread with caution. The waypoints we recorded with the etheric analyzer revealed an unsettling occurrence. In the course of fighting us, the gods suspended a tremendous amount of their ether, so much so as to dilute their very essence. Lest you worry, you've done no wrong. The gods themselves wish to fight, after all. That being said, we should avoid engaging in further battle until we learn more about their true objective. To that end, we will seek out the 13th unnamed being whose duty is to watch unflinching. Braha is correct, and we have no reason to believe otherwise. Said being is the Watcher on the Moon. Please know I've already inquired permission to use the Tower of Babel from the Elsevier contingent, who oversee the structure with the Garlean people's leave. Wait, we're really going then? To the moon? Huzzah! I wonder what the Watcher's like. If there are no other matters, then let us forth at once. I should speak with the gods. Best to seek them out now. They may not be here later. <sighs> Getting closer to finishing leveling, Blue Mage. Not a whole lot more left to do. Thirteen more levels to go. Greetings, Highlands Champion. You are ever welcome here, as are your companions. It was a pleasure to meet you, Watcher. We come hoping that you would answer some questions to us, questions about Hydaelyn. 
They have deciphered the monument at the heart of the Phantom Realm. In addition to the names and duties of the Twelve, it speaks of one who is unnamed, who shall watch unflinching. Are we correct in assuming that that individual is you? The Twelve have existed for eras. If you know aught about them, will you not share your knowledge with us? They have a desire which they claim can only be fulfilled through battle with mankind. We wish to understand what that is. Please? So man has managed to come this far. Very well. You have earned the right to know. Remember, however, that I am but a creation. Though I have been imbued with some memories of the past, they are far from complete. First of all, I am indeed the unnamed being the monument describes. An entity created by Heidelin to serve a purpose alongside the Twelve. Together they were charged with preserving equilibrium on a sundered and unstable star. Like myself, they were given shape from people who once existed. And like myself, they believed that the world should be untrusted to the new life that had emerged. While I do not possess detailed memories of that time, Bernard selected those she deemed best suited to their respective duties. That explains why the Twelve appear to have personalities like mortals. The men and women they once were were once were influenced by their personalities, yes, but so too did the faith of mortals. No longer no, when men pray, they will be the uh, they will the object of their worship to assume a form that can be they better grant them their heart's desire. In this manner have the Twelve been shaped over eons into images that fit men's ideals. So you're right, Raha. Hopes and prayers have the power to influence the gods. Yet even as the, they thus changed at Fernaz's behest, they would have refrained from intervening in mortal affairs. As a, as a result, there will have been times when they acted in ways that are contrary to their expect to your expectations. But now that Heidelin is no more and the final day is averted, the Twelve have arrived at a decision regarding their fate all their own. It is not for me to reveal the truth of their desire. I can, however, guarantee that it will not visit harm upon mankind. Nay, far from it. Well, everyone never felt that the gods meant us ill. To have your guarantee as well, we could, couldn't possibly doubt them anymore. This must assuring to confirm the connection between you and the Twelve. With this, we may proceed in our quest with the easier hearts. Thank you for sharing your knowledge with us. We shall return to the Omphalos and continue engaging with your brethren. That is well. As I watch on, I shall pray that the tale comes to a happy conclusion for myth, gods and men alike.
Too bad I can't just teleport right there. Something's amiss. The gods' avatars are nowhere to be seen. That's because our preparations are complete. Very sexy. Oh, I've waited so bloody long for this moment. <laughs> Limlin, such are such uncouth words the first you would speak unto our guests. I'll leave off, Thalia. You can't tell me you're not as excited as I am. I would be the first to admit my joy, but on such a momentous occasion, I would act with due propriety. Well met, children of man. Tis our understanding that you have spoken with the Watcher and ascertained our true nature. Indeed, we were created by Heidelin to tend the star. Having built the Omphalos at its heart and our sanctums throughout Aether Rich Eorzea, we labor to preserve the balance of reality. All this we have learned, but there is still one thing we do not understand. Our analysis of the Phantom Realm revealed that you and yours dilute your very selves by fighting us. But this does not impede your ability to carry out your duties. We appreciate your concern, but you needn't worry. Although I am to disappoint, it isn't the little fellow. Brethren use various creatures as their avatars. I chose the form of a man. The better to share in your solitude. And it fell to me. I guess that's his true form, but I preferred him in his previous incarnation. The Wanderer, to beckon unto the, um, unto the Umphalos, the, they who could grant our wish. Oh, what? How could you hide such a thing from us? Had you known my true identity and, pur and our purpose, we feared that you wouldn't refuse to fight us. 
But our fears were unfounded. You've heeded our request, and despite the hardships, endeavored to grant it. Forgive me, but I must leave the little fellow in your care. In the innermost part of our realm, we shall reveal the truth in its entirety. I await your coming with bated breath. This is our grandest moment, mortal. Gird your loins and have at us. I shall receive you with my all. Be as a raging torrent, child of man. So Derek is the Wanderer, the deity, deity who shares in men's solitude. In order to beckon us into the Phantom Realm, he poses an explorer and solicited the aid of the sons of St. Koinuk. In spite of this, I do not feel as though I've been deceived, nor do I harbor any resentment. Rather, I simply feel sad. I understand. It is as if a dear friend were suddenly spirited away. In hindsight, perhaps it was in its expectation of the coming battle that he had kept men at arm's length. Ook. I imagine it must be even harder for you. Know that one of the twelve walked among us. It makes me want to do the best we can by them. Aye, since time immemorial, the twelve have watched over all who abide on this star. And even as they fulfilled their purpose of maintaining stability, as beings possessed of sentience, they also heeded the hearts of men. So let's likewise heed their hearts and do our utmost to grant them their desire. And I believe we all know what comes next. This will be the final foray into the God's Sanctum. This task we entrust to you and your adventurer friends once more. As there's no telling what may happen afterwards, I shall remain on guard here. Twice now you have triumphed, triumphed and I have faith that you will do so yet again. Go well. Well, that was quick. Didn't imagine, did not imagine that would be that quick.
pretty. Very pretty. Come, mortals. Make your way through our watery sanctum. Let us see how you fare against my servants. <clears throat> So I've been trying to find where a leak was with my sink, and I finally found it. But now I got a puddle of water that I got. to be expected for they who vanquished my pupil, Byregard. It shall be my pleasure to welcome you personally. to this moment, children of man. The scholar shall measure your depth of knowledge. So will you arrive, I wonder? Oh well, I died there. Oh. Of ignorance be cleansed! Join me in deepest knowledge. Let flow the waters of your mind. and you shall find new paths.
I hate geometry. Small wonder the others have exalted so. Is purifying. Reveal their nature. Tis time for a test. Share with me your ruminations. can be obtained through might. Enlighten one another. Well done, wise children. Well done. Smooth sailing so far, I see. Come then, mortals. does look really awesome. She looks like she'd kick your ass. I'll teach you the ways of navigation. Mine are the waves and the winds. Sadly, the saying that the chat is true, which is why I tried to do the dough for this book one time, but it didn't get us Apparently not. Can you contend with she who rules the tides? Of the White House. 
That's actually kind of cool. Oh, you don't disappoint. <laughs> Oi! Cut it out, you! <laughs> <laughs> like the stormy seas, I'm a harsh mistress. Okay, so she does it, just got bribed with a blow kiss. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but I'm not. I'm sorry. Feel free to correct me. You can surely do better than that. Apparently, it plays into a little bit of lore that's on uh, the Navigator's Dagger uh, and Navigator's Brandfish that you can catch. after my own heart. To seek new horizons, you must come together as one. It falls to you and yours to navigate the seas ahead. After all this time, it feels strange calling to you us.
it didn't work for me, but maybe she was casting something at the time I was I did it. I wasn't paying enough attention when I did. I am the last of us to face you. I'm surprised they did that with uh Limelin and not say like uh, uh Strong Alpha? are they who I think it is. Amidst the storm. If I remember correctly, the lore entries for the dagger, the Navigator's Sagger, and Navigator's Brand uh, fish. Basically, like, boiled down to. Uh, they, they were the actual, like, daggers that she threw at one of the other gods for sexually harassing her. You must persevere. Which I thought was incredibly entertaining. Sometimes the sounding was, uh, different games were put into the lore that are just like these little, when you first see them, we're just kind of like these kind of throwaway things, and then we just kind of have a little more import later in the, on the game with more lore to release. Wind, guide my arrow! My bowstring sings. You can overcome this. I know you can. Arise! But, though I may be able to, I probably can. The question becomes, do I want to? By fighting you, that strength shall be returned to the star. Say not your steps. Ah, so that's what's going on. Okay. So basically, in order to do your jobs, you're actively giving up part of your ether to return it back to the planet. Behold the wanderer's arrow. Uh. 
I'm glad that it was you who came to us. Here our journey ends. Blessings be upon you on the road ahead. These are really interesting bikes. May the wind ever be at your back. You're back. The Omphalus. It's suddenly transformed. Servants? What's the meaning of this? Those ones, I leave to you. Enemies remind me of enemies from Bane. Now. Stay here with the others.
The will of the star has entrusted the future to you and yours. As entities charged with ensuring life on Aetheris, we rejoice in this outcome with all our hearts. So they all merge together into one... one super beam. Eulogia. Why does that name sound familiar? Tis time, beloved children. Time to bid farewell to we relics of the past. Just give 
getting shoved around and I couldn't ever get to where it's like, oh fuck, I need to.
Thank you. Too bad. A lot of mechanics, I couldn't really tell entirely what was going on, but that's just because I am a very bad player. Those. Ooh, that one's not bad either. Oh. It's over the one with the literal sparkles on it. Are you alright? Thanks for clearing the way. That being, I presume, is the Twelve? You have done well, children of man. As promised, we shall reveal the truth in its entirety. Our desire is simply thus. To give ourselves unto the star as a blessing. In the 12 millennia we have existed, we have come to harbor tremendous power through prayers. Through battle, our essence shall unravel and return to the star, where it might give rise to new life. Such is our final gift to you. You mean you'll disappear? Yes, the fragments of our former souls which serve as the core of our existence shall rejoin the life stream. Yet though we may fade from sight, our individuality lost. Our stabilizing influence shall endure. The only thing to change is where your prayers find their way. Henceforth it shall be this, the instrument of blessing, that receives of mortal hopes, hopes that shall be given back to the star. But your presence brings comfort to mankind. Everyone would wish for you to remain. Must you truly fade away? Such gladdening things you say, child. We must confess, what we do, we also do for ourselves. When mankind overcame the final days, it so moved us that even we who are but constructs knew the greatest joy. You have shown your unfaltering love for the world. In return, we would show our undying love for you. Why not? Myths are wont to be woven and passed down. As long as men hold the Twelve in fondness, we, we shall live on in, our, in your faith in us. Uh, when you say such things... The moment of parting has come. By our blessing, may you march towards a brighter future. Well, beloved children. It's kind of sad that they have to go this way. When you're ready, brothers and sisters. May the font of your ingenuity ever flow. Yours is the strength to destroy all obstacles. Abide in virtue and hold fast to the truth. There is meaning in your deeds. Celebrate life and embrace, embrace death. May you flourish and reap a bountiful harvest.
in your limited time have boundless compassion. Carry yourself with honor and forge on towards victory. Harbor love in your heart for yourself, for others, and for the world. From past to future, the river of knowledge flows. Be part of its nourishing waters. May a wonderful new world greet you beyond destiny's horizon. Be calm as the ocean, and you shall weather any storm. As the wind blows unfettered, may you be free to follow your heart. Need to agonize so, Sean. Remain with, the, with them if that be your desire. But this is what we've dreamed of to return to the star together. I just. I never imagined that I'd grow so fond of them. That parting would be so hard. As long as we have abided in patience to rejoin the life stream. For the drop in the river of time that is man's fleeting life. Why not share your fate with them? Follow your heart as you ever have. And when the time comes, we shall meet again. I've decided to continue journeying a while longer. Words can't well express my surprise when I opened my eyes to see Derek standing there. I'm naturally curious as to what happened, but above all, I rejoice where dear friend returned. Bedtime for you. Well, thank you for joining us here this evening, Abby. Hopefully we'll see you again for some, something, some other night. And I hope you get a good sleep. Embraced by the gods, Derek is the very picture of peace. What to say in such a moment? Best to speak from the heart, I suppose. I'm glad to be back. And we're glad to have you back. Glad hardly suffices to describe it. We're of the moon that you're still here, Derek, or should we call you a Sean? 
I no longer have a Sean's powers. Derek will do. I was remade from the portion of my essence that wasn't returned to the star and will live out my days as a man. May I ask what happened? No sooner had the twelve vanished than you reappeared before us. At the very last, I couldn't bear it. Couldn't bear to say farewell. Your earnest friendship had weighed down my steps. And the little fellow's fervent call halted them. I was overwhelmed by the keenest longing to remain among you and see more of the world I love. Upon seeing me torn, my brethren bade me follow my heart. I needed no further urging. We created the instrument of blessing the faith that one day the star would no longer need our guiding hand. Thanks to you, that day has finally come. Ah, but I ramble. How uncharacteristic. Let us head back to the Omphalos, shall we? We must return to Charlian. The forum will be expecting a report. Yes, if the entire truth would be revealed to the public, it would shake the very foundation of the worship of the Twelve. Aye, and pending our, inter our report, we should do well to... We'd do well to consult the forum on what details are safe to disclose. Much pertaining to the field of mythology will need to be obfuscated, I fear. Worry not. On my account, inspired by our findings, I have a mind to examine the Twelve in the context of our reception theory. The people's perception of deities are wont to be informed by their culture. By comparing the differences across the eras and regions, I believe we may uncover heretofore unseen aspects to the Twelve. Reception theory, you say? Most intriguing. I should like to see the fruits of your research when I visit Charlian. When you do, have care not to reveal who you used to be. Our scholars would be all over, over you like starved beasts. I see. Perhaps I shall wait a while before I come calling. Before I came to you, I simply roamed the world. I had no objective. Nothing I wished to find. With this second chance I have, I mean to undertake my travels with a renewed perspective. But ere I set out... I would move my brethren's hopes elsewhere, to a place, to a place in men's, men's midst. Oh, what a wonderful idea. If you don't mind, we would, should like to accompany you. <clears throat> By all means, we make for the Sanctum of the Twelve in the East Shroud.
Uh, no matter how many times I visit, if times I visit the Sanctum, its majesty never fails to move me. And the rich history. Originally built during the dawn of the fifth astral era, it was reclaimed by the twelve by the wood before being restored in the wake of the calamity. Truly, it stands as a testament to the influence that magical civilization and city-states have had upon the Eorzean culture. This sanctum harbors the hopes of men, and now those of the brethren shall join them. If you are not adverse, I would like to speak a little of my brethren. That is, those individuals whose essence lent them form. As it pertains to another age, some concepts may be foreign to you, but would you be interested nonetheless? Excellent. Bergot was a man with a gift for creating inanimate objects such as buildings and furnishings. With his abilities, he served as supervisory role at the Bureau of the Architect, where he was nothing short of a pillar. His chief was, a caref was carefree to a fault, you see, and he took it upon himself to ensure the work was done. Ralgar was a brawny man whom Vuna encountered on her travels. They strictly, they quickly struck up a friendship, and he joined her on a quest to destroy an enormous meteor that was hurling towards the star. It is fair to say this event gave rise to legends surrounding the destroyer. Azema was a woman who served as a judicial officer in the bureau of the administrator. The experience served her well as the warden. She was an ardent proponent of the seat of Azim and dreamed of trading under Vanon, her successor. Nalto was a clo close personal friend of mine. A merchant by trade, he was outwardly gregarious, but also possessed a reserved side and knew quiet joy in his passion for ore. When man began treating him as a dual-aspected god, it reminded me of the person he used to be, and I couldn't help but be struck with the pang of nostalgia. Nafka was a landscape architect of great repute, who grew plants gathered from the star over. Despite being skilled in magic, she preferred to nurture plants as nature intended, and her garden ever bloomed with beautiful flowers. All who visited were said to leave with their souls salved. Althic was a researcher who observed newly made creations in Elpis. He possessed mastery over time magics and was known to be ki a kind-hearted, if reticent, man. Although it was his sister's urging that he first joined our faction, he soon became a stalwart believer in the cause and always took the initiative in discussion. Halon was a formidable warrior, tasked with hun hunting creations that were deemed detrimental to the star. For her prowess, she had been regarded as a leading candidate for the seat of Pashtarat, preserver of discipline and order. Menfinia was the youngest among us, a student affiliated with the words of La Habrea at the Aca Academia Niter. Even within the prestigious institution was considered a prodigy, and hers were the hands that created the magic to isolate and seal Zodiac. Daliak was the headmaster of the Academia Niter, a man of learning and leadership both. He presided over the institution's myriad faculties. No known phenomenon exists in which he wasn't versed, Words did not do justice to express the remark remarkable scholar that he was. 
Nemea was an observer in Elpis, like her older brother Althic. She possessed a caring and inquisitive nature, and was liked and trusted by her peers. It is said that she began the custom of offering flowers to the, to the departed. Lemlan was a researcher at Metabasios Thalassi, a facility for the observation and evaluation of sea life. So passionate was she about her work, she once threw a knife at someone who inadvertently came too close to her observation subject. <laughs> O'Shawn was a traveler whom Fanon encountered in the wilderness. They shared a campfire and discussed at length what it, length what it meant to be free. Leaving my hopes as the wanderer in this place, I shall set forth anew as a simple man named Derek. And last but not least, the Watcher. He was the chief archivist at Anemnesis, a knighter, and respected but not deeply as an individual, even as he cared for her as a dear friend. Indeed, among our number, no one's more devoted to Fanal. And that devotion made him best suited to his duty and the solitude that accompanies it. That is all. There's a lot to remember, but I should be glad if they remain with you in some way. We're grateful that you should share with us these new aspects of Hydaelyn and the Twelve. Thank you. Though just past time we head back to Charlie, and it wouldn't do to keep Ojika waiting. I assume you were traveling via Limsa Lamenta, in which case allow us to see you off from there. Don't know how to now I have wandered alone, but as I recently learned, a journey is better shared. Yeah, it really is. It really, really is. Excuse me. Our friends are presently booking their passage. That's where you were. There's room aboard the next ship, so we'll be setting sail shortly. Oh, Derek, no sooner do we arrive in a crowded place than you up and disappear. Ah, uh, tis a force of habit in order to avoid people. But I need to do so anymore, do I? On the contrary, I should embrace the chance to connect with other souls. As your comrades, we completely agree. Remember, you're always welcome to the, at the Baldesian Annex. So be sure to pay us a visit. You may depend on it. Thank you, Derek, for giving us your trust. And thank you as well. Had you not been with us, we would have struggled to grant the Twelve their wish. Well, we had best find our vessel. 
While the report needs to be compiled, I believe we can officially declare our investigation complete. Till next we meet, my friends. of time. Ere I embark on my journey, there is a place nearby I would like to visit. Might I ask you to accompany me? Thank you. Come, I, we shall head outside the city via the Tempest Gate. Here the wind whips from the, in from the sea like a storm, but I've always found the sensation quite invigorating. Lest you wonder, I intend to strike west and thence my, my way through Upper and Outer Lanasia. In order to make my new beginning as a man en route, I wish to see Ashan's embrace with you. You need only accompany me across the bridge. From there I shall continue on my own. That to be clear skies. Such a great wave that has ripped the gods' grip from the mainland. In the wake of the calamity, my brother and I were all, all occupied with our respective duties. This is my first, first, very first time seeing the bridge. Shall we then? So it's temporarily constructed with wood. Ah, such an invigorating breeze. <coughs> oh, Etheris. Your beauty truly knows no bounds. Forgive me, I was lost in thought. I look forward to the bridge's completion. It is a fine bridge, boasting splendid views and brimming with life. The very image of man's determination to overcome adversity. I am honored that it should be named to Sean. Well, this is as far as I ask you to come. Well, if you're willing, might we converse a little more? Curse me that I hadn't asked you about your opinion of the Twelve. How you personally perceive us, for instance, or what you felt when you faced us. Your words from the heart I would take with me as a memento. Is that so? The others will be glad to hear that. Thank you for humoring me, and apologies for keeping you so long.
Lunoth, I shall tour Lunasia and visit those locales which are named after the Twelve. After which I shall go wherever the wind blows. Together with this fellow, of course, until such time as he tires of my company. This time I shall embrace the joy of meeting and accept the sorrow of parting. And when time comes for me to return to the star, I shall share my experiences with my brethren. Let to say, your words will feature prominently in my recounting. Kinda hope he makes future appearances. But then again, I kinda wish like all the gods had kinda done what he did. Basically give up their godliness, become mortal, roam the world. You will continue your own journeys, will you not? Now I shall look for you out there. Fare you well, my friend. And may the Twelve bless you and keep you. probably the best of the Alliance Raid quest lines. I mean, in my opinion, it was certainly probably the best. Okay. Well, with that, uh, we're going to change over games. Give me a moment here. <laughs> 